<sighs> okay. This is going to be a spicy take, but, um, and this is also not a criticism of Langchain because they are new, right? It's a 0 0.0.75. Um, as a sysadmin, I am not impressed by Langchain. And I know that a lot of people that are coming from the AI and ML place are super impressed by this, but this is fundamentally just a playbook or a runbook. And so what I mean by that is it is a, it is a uh, configuration of tools that allows you to create um, a, a workflow, a very simple workflow. So, you know, you can choose an LLM, you can choose, you know, a few um, like tools to go reach for, uh, and then you can chain them together, uh, and then it can make some choices as it goes. But guys, this is an Ansible playbook. This is, this is ancient history for sysadmins. Like, like, yes, Ansible is not like native to, uh, uh, to, to language models yet, but in terms of like, configurability and reaching out to API endpoints and automation, Langchain is basically an Ansible playbook that is language model centric first. Now, that being said, Ansible is incredibly powerful for automation, for process automation. Um, it's also really super simple. Uh, like it's YAML, it's super human readable. Uh, so I'm super not impressed by Langchain. They should probably move to YAML, copy success, right? Where if you want to run book, just go ahead and just go ahead and, and copy you know old stuff that works YAML JSON probably. Um, it's also like so. Then here's the other thing that is super not impressive uh, to me is that okay you've got a run book, great don't care. Uh, <laughs> it's been done. Um, you need uh, a lot more stuff, so it needs to run in loops and it also needs to run in parallel um, because. What Langchain does, if you look at Ansible Tower, which is, it's just this part. Like, you need the rest of this architecture before Langchain is, to me, useful or compelling. Um, so if anyone from Langchain wants to talk to a veteran sysadmin and a veteran automation engineer, my name is Dave Schapp Automator. Uh, happy to talk to you. Uh, but yeah, so like, you've got the playbooks, that's great. It's a start, but then you need rules, you need triggers, you need data collection, uh, you need monitoring, like you need a full platform. And I'll talk about a couple of open source platforms that are uh, good alternatives that you could integrate with. Um, but basically what I mean by a workflow or a runbook is this is a graphical representation of, uh, of, uh, of a lang chain or a language uh, prompt chaining. Um, this is the same as this. This is just a YAML uh, definition of something like this. And this is nothing new. Process orchestration has, has been around for a while. So here's another example of a graphical process uh, orchestrator or workflow orchestrator uh, engine, which again, like this is nothing new. Um, workflow or uh, business, business process orchestrators and, and automation orchestrators have been around since like at least the 90s. So again, like, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, which is why I'm, I have not been impressed by Langchain yet, because it's basically reinventing the wheel for stuff that has existed for literally decades. In some cases, it's just for language models. Um, and so, what I mean by that, let's let's go through this. So, like, um, you know, some of the some of the stuff, like, okay, uh, we can do we can do agents. Um, actually, where did it go? Uh, okay, so like chatbots you know, like where you've got a little bit of memory and variables you can pipe in. Um, oh yeah, templates. So like, you know, you piping in templates and saying, okay, grab this. Like this has all been done before. Um, so, oh, here's another example of node-based workflows. Um, this is from Blender, right? And so the biggest problem with all this is that even if you have choices, even if you have, if, if you can design a workflow that's like, okay, get to a decision point and then picks, pick, you know, A, B, or C, or even if you have 20 options, right? It's still an intrinsically linear workflow. It does one thing, which means that you need to do it by hand manually. That is not the correct way to use language models. You need to use the language model to design this whole thing. That is what I am working on, 
Um, that's what I wrote about in Symphony of Thought, which is let's break down the process of creating, tracking, and completing tasks and have the language model do all of it. So I'm not really interested in hard coding workflows, which is why I'm like, eh, I don't really care about uh, 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 Langchain. Now, that being said, if Langchain gets to the point where it can dynamically compose tasks and track tasks, that would be great. So there's two platforms that I want to introduce you to. One is Stackstorm. So Stackstorm is like an open source alternative to uh, Ansible Tower. And so one of the one of the huge benefits of Stackstorm is that you have uh, event triggers, and there's all kind there's like web hooks, there's timers, there's all kinds of ways that you can trigger these, um, and then uh, there's rules that they can follow in terms of uh, what runs when, what it connects to, and so on. And then then you trigger the workflow, right? The set of instructions. This is the uh, just. That's all that that's all that Langchain does is okay. You have one workflow. So what you need to do is you have to have a bunch of different workflows that can be dynamically modified and dynamically kicked off with those um, deep chains. Uh, and then of course there's the actual final action, the final output that comes from it. Uh, and then of course uh, Stackstorm, like Ansible, has plenty of integrations with all kinds of things, whether it's databases, cloud service providers, servers, networks you name it, it has the integration. Um, another one is Rundeck, which I have used extensively because Rundeck's a little bit simpler than Stackstorm. Um, but Rundeck is, uh, it's, it's basically the same thing where you've got a, a really good web GUI. Um, so here's an example of the web GUI. And then you've got uh, jobs, you've got uh, nodes, it can be decentralized, it stores the data and the results. Um, it can go talk to uh, databases or whatever. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, I, I do appreciate when people say like, oh, you should use Langchain. Um, but from a sysadmin perspective, Langchain is ultra primitive. <laughs> so um, if I were to if I were to use an existing um, project for a cognitive architecture, it would almost certainly be Stackstorm because it is an automation engine, right? Langchain is an, is a is a workflow orchestrator uh, or a run, really it's just a runbook provider. And a runbook provider is just a tiny component of a fully fledged cognitive architecture. What you need is parallelism, you need triggers, you need rules, and then you also need to collect and store that data um, in, a, in a really meaningful way. So with all that said, I do appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, they'll, they'll get there, put it that way, they'll get there. Um, but as of right now, I'm not particularly interested in Langchain. If I were to put in the energy I would, like I said, I would use Stackstorm or Rundeck um, and then just build all the functions in here because you can just run Python functions out of either of these um, and then pull data. You can pipe data in, uh, which these, these two uh, engines have pretty sophisticated ways of populating variables. Um, and then from there, you create very granular uh, uh, workflows or runbooks and then you call them dynamically to perform individual cognitive functions. Um, but this is, not, this is not there yet. It's not quite sophisticated enough. So with that said, I'm rambling. I'm repeating myself. Thanks for watching. I hope this was valuable. Um, if anyone from Langchain wants to reach out, feel free. Um, but yeah, uh, number one lesson, copy success. Ansible, Stackstorm, Rundeck, they already have this figured out.